Hello everyone and welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video we're going to try the Maya space plane on the Arcturus VL again but this time without crew and with the switch to where the controller is and see if I'm right about that or if I'm wrong about that. So it's on the launch pad ready to go and let's see how it goes. Otherwise our main goal is to get the Venus lander over to Venus and if that works out we can finish that program off and then pick up the Earth Space Station contract, launch a space station, and then launch the spacecraft, the uh, Maya space plane, to that space station to do the rendezvous contract. Okay, well, here goes nothing. Um, let me just see whether we've got these locked or unlocked. They're unlocked right now, so that's we'll test it like that. Throttle up, SAS is on, and we'll use Smart ASS this time. And ignition. Launch. I mean, I should have known better, but I sort of had in my mind that it'd be controlling from the Maya spacecraft up top rather than that controller at the bottom, but I should have known that RP-1 wouldn't be doing that. I'm still going pretty steeply to avoid problems. Uh, it's got some oscillations. Uh, that, that wasn't the problem. That wasn't the problem. Ah, uh, okay. So, uh, well, there, the controller is still here. Um, I guess that wasn't the problem. All right. Well. Well, I think I can land this. Well, I don't know. Uh, we tried locking the controls on this, we tried limiting the control on the big fins at the bottom, we tried uh, changing the location of the core. We're just sticking to the Bay 4 on that. In general, this is a very nice space plane though. I suppose I ought to paint the wings <laughs> a little bit better. Uh, though th th this is probably not entirely unreasonable, but... Let's just cut there for now. Okay. Don't wiggle too much. Do go down. Okay. All right, no problems there. Well, okay, no problems recovering the plane, but yeah, I really wish we could figure that out, but it's not working out very well on the Arcturus VL. Maybe I need big solid boosters and make it a full Ariane 5 or something, and then maybe it'll work out. Five meter core and everything. Okay, so we got that value back. Well, we'll just pay attention to Venus Lander. We'll do that maneuver. And, yep, yeah, we'll wait until we've got that done, and then we'll start the space station one. Okay, no problems here so far as we do the mid-course correction. Okay, ignition. I'll actually take this initially, I think. And we'll have it like that. Okay, so we'll add the SOI change alarm. And it's continuing on its way. Okay, now we are entering Venus SOI. Let's just go ahead. Oh, it didn't show me the... Okay, now we should be in Venus SOI. Yes. Seems that way. Okay, we're gonna keep the high periapsis, I believe. It doesn't seem to hurt our capture. Our line back is going that way, which at periapsis should be fine for a bit especially because we're higher up and we have good comms. We don't have much by way of science on here, but we're planning to get from the surface. We've got a visible imaging three running at least. Everything is two hours or less, which is good because I don't know how long we can expect it all to last once it's in the atmosphere of Venus. As far as maybe we could have been doing something else in the meantime, remember our budget isn't what it used to be, 
in the heyday of our moon landing moon landings so yeah yeah pretty good comms just got point retrograde here okay ignition for capture Again, our goal is to make the entry as mild as possible. Oh, well, that should be good enough. We'll save the 154 dipping it into the atmosphere. Hopefully it won't take that much. 115 maybe? We have just about enough. Okay. Let's go up. At this point I'll arm the parachutes. I wonder if our deorbit point is good for earth comms though. You've got weak lines to the other two. I don't know if they're, they've they got... I mean, looks like they might have something back home. After all this time. Okay, ignition. Okay, I'll say 109. Let's try it. We'll have to be on internal power. Now. So let's get rid of all this business. It was almost done anyway. Okay, off it goes. Oh, we need 10 more minutes up here for the mass spectrometry. Almost done with the mass spectrometry if we only had just a little bit more time, but we don't. Okay, here we go. So we've got atmospheric probe, so we need to enter Venus's atmosphere below 110 kilometers, well, 109, um, and then transmit some data. Hopefully telemetry analysis will happen, but we'll see. And then land safely. I think I packed enough charge on here that if we do accidentally go around, which seems unlikely, uh, that we would still have enough charge on the second pass. Ablation is happening. Well, maybe 109 is too light. Now we are going up again. We might go around. A mild entry into Venus's atmosphere. How rare is that? <laughs> The Venus Atmospheric Probe contract is the one that gets us our confidence points that we need to run the space station program at a high rate. We didn't quite finish the telemetry analysis though. No, well, I guess we'll get that mass spectrometry after all. I suppose I will bring it in a little bit lower. Let's just go with a hundred. Okay, we finished Venus Atmospheric Probe, that's fine. Now we just need to safely land and transmit signs from the surface. So that's largely about comms as far as I can tell. Right now we're communicating through that probe. We're actually not communicating with a direct line back. So that's a little bit tenuous. Okay, here we go. It will not be going back up this time. Okay, well that's that. About 9 G's at its peak. And now the long trip down to the surface. Got the pressure scan. 30 meters per second and basically at 30 kilometers. This is taking forever. Lots of clouds. That's a nice surface. Midlands, huh? It's always Midlands. Even with Venus it's Midlands. Maybe we'll still have comms. Barely over the horizon there. It's getting hot though. The dish is getting hot. Uh-oh. 
I don't know if it's a good policy to try and push myself. I doubt it. It's probably better to have more mass on the heat shield than to try and use the RCS to push us down. Okay, yeah, I guess we'll have to get to the surface quicker because I think it's gonna blow up before we get to the surface. Yes. Oh! But we're actually using the UHF to communicate. Still a chance. But it's taking forever. <laughs> uh, uh, this is why I hate Venus. Mind you, it's only 15 bits per second, so... We probably don't want to be transmitting that 24 megabytes. Oh, apparently the shoots couldn't take that. Um, I thought I had asked for the right kind of shoots, but 12 meters per second it can't do? Anyway, 12 meters per second should be okay as far as impact tolerance. Just don't rock too much. Want the heat shield to absorb the impact. Ooh, it did. It did. Okay. We're still good. We're still good. Oh, it's rolling a lot though. Okay. Fine. <laughs> this is fine. Now... What I want is the landed stuff. Uh, let's not transmit any of the other stuff right now. Let's not transmit the visual imaging that's going to take forever. Okay. All right. I think we've got the crude la uh, uncrewed landing. Not crude landing. Uncrewed landing. So that's all good. I'll leave it transmitting everything else now. We got the critical thing. We'll gather the science, but it could take a while for it to transmit. Well, as long as it has electric charge, I suppose. Electric charge and comms. It wasn't pretty, but it worked. <laughs> it's slowly getting through the science transmissions. It's all visible imaging now. That's all that's left. Okay, so yeah, I will leave it transmitting as much as it can back to Space Center. Got another Venus landing contract. Wait a minute. I did that though. We're clear that I finished it, right? Okay, yes, it's it's fine. Alright, well, even though we're giving up on all this money, we did for, you know, chump change really. Uh, less than a tenth of what they were offering. But we need to get going with this. So, complete that. Yeah. Well, we got a lot of confidence because of that. Not confidence, uh, reputation because we did that so quickly. But, okay, why can't I pick this up? Complete programmed crude orbit. I did. Why does it think we haven't completed programmed crude orbit? Well, that's buggy right there. Um, crude orbit, but it was deprecated. But I did the full one. Okay, I, I think, uh, so the new version, there's a uh, crude orbit deprecated and a new crude orbit, but I ended up doing the full one with the crude orbit bonus stuff. I'm just gonna save everything, zip it up, and then try and indicate that I've done it and see if that helps. Because um, we've definitely done it. There's no other crude orbit thing that we can do. So yeah, let me see if I can fix that. But they had updated that program, that's why it's confused. Okay, so just to indicate what I did, the Requirement here used to say crude orbit early because after I started this series they split the crude orbit thing into an early and then sort of an advanced section instead of just having crude orbit. But I actually in doing the old version did both parts and so it said crude orbit early but I've changed it to just crude orbit which is the one that I actually completed and hopefully that will solve the problem. We will see. Okay, looks like that did it. So, yes, let us pick it up. Uh, yep.
that's what we wanted. Okay, so we need to do whatever it tells us to do. Let's see. First space station. That's a lot of stuff. Space for three people, one docking port. Um, basically placing it where we want to place it anyway. Uncrewed though, that's fine. But then it immediately wants us to bring at least two crew to the station. So we're going to have to put two people into the Maya spacecraft. But that would be good for doing the science anyway. Keep at least two crew aboard for 30 days. So 30 days of supplies, at least. And then they have to come back, obviously. And then we have to keep the space station in orbit. Okay, I mean, that should fulfill quite a lot of stuff. We've, we'll pick that up. And then we've got the rendezvous. We'll have the docking contract later. But we'll probably rendezvous and dock immediately. I might as well get through this. We'll see. Anyway, let's cook up a space station. So we've got the habitation module, which carries four, about six tons. And that costs 440,000 to unlock. And 9,000 a pop each time. It's got an exercise bonus. It's got a treadmill. Otherwise... Um, nitrogen pressure controller, um, crew report, uh, human rated, of course, uh, regular lithium hydroxide scrubber, and then that's it. But then we also have these. Um, this one is directly comparable. It's got 23 days of supplies, but that's for four people. Uh, so six tons again, a little bit more expensive, but the entry cost is less by like half. It's like half of the other one. This one says uh, generator negative 800 watts, which is an interesting way of going about it. This doesn't have anything like that. We could send one of each, but maybe I should just unlock a cheaper one. Of course, we have plenty of uh, unlock credit, 1.3 million. <laughs> so. Maybe I should just go for the one that looks better. Well, I don't know. This is a little bit uneven, isn't it? I don't know if that looks better. This one is way too stock-like. I once again wish I had my own module. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not thrilled with either one, actually. Oh, this one didn't have all the food, water, and oxygen in at the start. May or may not want shielding. So let's say we have two people. That's 60 days of food, water, and oxygen, basically. But even though we have a lot of unlock credit, is there a point to wasting it on this? I like that it has more capacity, though. Oh, and this one is really small. Hmm. Even though they're both six tons, this, this one is really small, physically. So what does that do with our stress here? Okay, let's see. Let's say we've got two people. Living space is good here. Comfort modest. 162 days. Now let's see about this one. Two people. Cramped, 65 days. Well, that makes sense. It's really small, isn't it? So, yeah, we'll we'll spend the extra credit to unlock the better one then. Oh, wow. Tooling a procedural service module tank is really expensive. Um, we'll find some other way to contain food, water, and oxygen then. This, that's a, that's a lot. That's a lot of tooling cost. Okay, so this is what we've got. We've got the hitchhiker storage container, basically. And then we've got a water tank up here, because the water doesn't need to be in a service module tank. It's just a normal isogrid tank. And so we've got underutilized, because we don't need that much water. And then we've got the oxygen tanks down here. We're using that size, because we had already tooled the service module number two at that size. 
but we do have to have a big tank here for the food and lithium hydroxide and that will cost 27,000 to tool. And then we also have to tool these propellant tanks for our little thrusters. They're tilted out because we might dock something else here and it still probably would get blasted, but at least in theory we've taken that into consideration. Uh, they'll be disabled pretty quickly and maybe we'll even have the Kerbals take them off. And then we have the RCS thrusters here and then we have the solar panels which are you know what let me just uh, tool this stuff so we have to but we have to tool the fairings as well so let me put those back on those are now five meter and so they're bigger and actually they're the biggest tooling cost and everything else is sort of already done okay so that's all the tooling we got a controller down here there's a propellant only docking port down here and then the um, Apollo docking system up there so that's what we'll be using and right now we only have the propellant only docking port on the Maya spacecraft though I don't think there's any big deal swapping uh, Apollo 1 for that instead and then we have the Vulcane rocket with the boosters with the Viking engines and the rocket should be able to get it to orbit without any problems we're using the 460 ton pad it's 430 tons and then the station itself has 557 meters per second if it wants to use it and this controller is an 18 ton controller it had been tooled already before and that's the idea we don't want anybody on board we put two people in of course you know, I mean, of course, we're not going to have them on board, but uh, we have put two people in to ch make sure that all the stuff is good. As far as food, water, and oxygen is concerned, we have 320 days worth. So, plenty. The same with the lithium hydroxide. As far as stress, um, well, we'll see in the actual practical si situation. It's not showing it right now. So, yes, we don't have to upgrade the GSE. Let's build one and see if we can launch it. We do, of course, have to unlock the habitation module and the Apollo docking system. The staging might need a little bit of a fix. We'll deal with that later. Thanks to the station program, we now have way, way, way more funding. Uh, 3,500 per day. So now we can actually put everybody on that pad and we still have plenty of extra. So that's good. Uh, did we have anything building down here? No. Well, let's get everybody off that pad and put them on ELA-5 but that's the max for ELA-5 unfortunately and yeah well anyway it's good to accumulate funds I'm sure we'll need to use them soon enough okay so here we are I thought about launching it into the moon's trajectory basically in line with the moon uh, for future lunar stuff but I don't think that's necessary for this one maybe we'll have a different station that's a little bit more robust when we want to do that this one will make it simple for rendezvous with our space plane. Our space plane has some extra delta V. Of course, we dumped propellant out of it last time in order to make for a safe re-entry. But I don't want to complicate things at this point. Uh, we will keep it as simple as possible. We'll even put it into the standard one and a half hour orbit that we were using for the space plane. That will satisfy the space station's requirement. It just needs a greater than 250 kilometers. And... 286 is basically what we're going to so it'll keep everything very simple and then later on if we want to complicate things we'll build a bigger station uh, so yeah, hopefully with a lot of extra money we'll see uh, I mean it's gonna be a few years with this uh, program so maybe we'll accumulate some funds and build a nicer station and a nicer shuttle so with that ignition and launch We'll have to toss this pretty steeply. It's just got to be the Vulcan for a big part of it. We don't have any upper stage. That's probably for the best. If we had a RZ-20 stage, a Griffin-2 stage, or something like that, then that'd be a lot of weight on the Vulcan stage and with the station there as well. So this is the low Earth orbit optimized version. And we're past the speed of sound. 
Okay, and booster set. Six minutes and 40 seconds left on this stage. So we'll keep at this angle for a bit. Delta V wise, it's fine. Lots of Delta V. Okay, fairing set. Just cruising right along. It's been a long way to orbit, but we're getting some decent thrust to weight ratio now. And we're basically wherever I want it to be. We do want to deorbit this stage, so I'll cut it short. Okay, good enough. All right. All is well. It does not have the capability to dock on its own. It doesn't have the forward thrusters. And just to make sure... Station 1... And it is a station. Alright, it is officially labeled a station. We have space for three crew. Oops. Uh, oh, it's already checkmarked that. Okay. Okay, so that'll do. Um, a little bit lopsided, but we can work with that. Ah, I should have put the forward RCS just to tune that up a little bit, but this is okay. This is okay. We just need to bring crew to it. But for now, with our first space station in orbit, I'll wrap it up here. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.